Oke. Okay. Halo. Good afternoon. So, uh, let me finish my last talk, please. So, so what I was telling you the last time was the idea of flows of vector fields on gradient manifolds. So, basically, what were flows? So, just to remind you really fast. So, degree zero flows were maps from gradient manifolds n times r to n. So it's basically theta was solving some some equations, and first of them was that kind of if you first pull back by theta from functions here, functions here, then you act by this vector field, and it's the same field as the uh, same thing as you you will first act by the vector field flow of you, you are looking for and then pull it back by theta. So this was kind of this is this is kind of differential equation. And then there is uh, initial conditions for a flow, which means that if you compose theta with this map, this gives you identity on and, and you can and I will Today I will denote this guy simply as sigma zero as, as zero section because it's basically just graded analog of, of, of zero section of Cartesian product n times r. So so why not call this call this a zero section? Right? And we were proving last time that this can be solved uh, for uh, for any manifold and for any vector field, right? And we just assume that m is compact, so we don't have to. Con kind of concern ourselves with, with domains of, of flows, so so everything is well defined. And so last time I start start to prove that this is actually true. And kind of there were several steps. And the first step was to <coughs> to actually look on the underlying vector field of X. So if for every vector field of dv zero, there is an ordinary vector field on the underlying manifold and find its find its flow theta zero, which is ordinary flow of an ordinary vector field, so it's not known that it exists, it's cyclic, etc. So M is compact, so it's globally defined. And last time I told you that uh, you can basically solve these equations uh, in the case when everything is flat and your your sheaf of functions is just this sheaf of form power series uh, kind of the model sheaf for for and I told you how how it's solved so it gives some system of infinitely many ordinary differential equations which can be nevertheless solved. Uh, kind of iteratively, or uh, I don't remember the words you suggested last hierarchically. time. Hierarchically, right? Okay, so and be because I have more time, since I don't have to skip this, I will tell you more. So I will tell you now how it how it's proved, how it's proved like actually. So so one can use this second part to uh, prove the following statement. So you can now choose. So so now let's make. Back to general case. And for any for any V open subsets of N and any open interval of R such that This web theta zero, which I already had, and it's very important part of its entire proof is that I already have this globally defined map theta zero. So I can consider open subset U and V such that U times I is mapped under theta zero inside of V. And kind of 
I have I have local charts, ready local charts for my gradient manifold on those open substances. So this means basically that I can compose everything with the very local charts and end up end up with some maps between this modal sheaves or some open subsets, some manifolds thereof. And and I can now show that I using this part two, I can always construct theta kind of locally. So you take this n times, but you only look on the open submanifold supported to new times i and because of this property theta zero maps this inside v so basically we have second map which goes to open submanifold over v here. Uh, what I mean by this restriction is simply restrict your sheet uh, to open subsets of v instead of all subsets of n. So that, that's what this basically means. So one can show that this is some manifold in some sense of the original one working with that. And one can construct theta which satisfies some condition. And first of them is the same same equation as here, except kind of restricted to whenever this makes sense. So you only use this vector field on u times e, and you act by fullback by theta evaluated on v, so not the global one, but just restrictive one, and theta v and x restricted to v. Uh, ah, there's a function missing here. So I can write, uh, write, write this like this. Both in x and to v. So it solves this equation from the differential part. And then what is interesting that you, you don't have to, because now i doesn't have to contain zero, so but you can fix initial conditions kind of anywhere, which means that for each t in i. Let sigma tu be a map from m restricted to u to n times r restricted to u times i. And this map is, is I don't want to I don't want to write it too too explicitly, but it's basically it's a similar thing as here, but instead of factorizing here through zero, I factorize through the point M. So this is this is just a map which goes from M to a single point and then embedding the and then one embeds this single point into R as, as T like as a specific specific value. So, so this is just a special this is just a special case for this. So it's just as you know, the underlying map of this graded map simply maps M to the point MT in the Cartesian product. And that's it. And, and then we can basically prescribe composition with this map to be arbitrary function for any radius movement, radius movement. From M restricted to U to M restricted to to me. Uh, phi. So this map is phi, such that only thing I have to somewhat because I have already fixed the underlying map, so I have to ensure that if I compose the underlying maps of those two things, I will get the correct condition. Okay, so what this means that this means that for every kind of square in my n times r 
uh, I can prescribe any initial conditions at any point and then solve this ordinary differential equation uniquely on that, on that square. Sorry, I just have to find my explanation, otherwise, I will kill myself. And this, is, this can be somewhat kind of because you can compose everything very low pushas, basically restricts to this case, except last time I only told you that I fixed initial conditions at, at n times zero, but you can fix them anywhere. And uh, the, so, the, the system of OD is, is still solvable in the very same way, except you know, there are different initial conditions, but it can be nevertheless solved for arbitrary initial conditions. Only thing is that this has to be crazy smooth map for me. <coughs> okay, so this is part four. A free story. Now, using this, so let me just tell you what is a flow domain. So I assume that M is compact to avoid this discussion, but I have to introduce it anyway. So flow domain. It's just an open subset of n times r such that for each m the set which is usually you known as dm, which is just a set of all p's in r such that mt is in d is an open integral. Containing zero. Right, so, so flow domain is, is such such open subset in n times r such that in, in particular it always has to contain n times zero. And then if you fix m, the, the set of points which are over this m uh, form an open interval containing zero. So this is what is called flow domain. And why flow domains are important? That we can prove the following lemma. Okay, so let let any theta. Okay, so let d be a flow domain. Uh, and let theta be map defined on this flow domain from gradient gradient manifold n times r to, to n, satisfying uh, basically these two conditions. So so I, I can write it again. I don't write it again. So it's like I know and you know this is system star. Uh, and suppose suppose any or any any other theta has this property uh, then the theta is equal to theta prime, right? So so anytime you find solutions to this system on any great domain, oh, sorry, on any flow domain, uh, and there are two different ones, uh, then they have to be equal. Right? Uh, maybe I should add here just to be on the safe side, underlying map of two both of them is theta zero. Because is fixed for all the discussion anyway, so, so I see this. And theta zero to, to be precise. Okay, and how does one prove this? That's kind of interesting. Because you kind of want to use that that statement there, but you only know it kind of locally on some on, on some on some square. You can compare it on some square where you have some uh, coordinate charts U and V, such that everything fits nicely together. But 
The idea is the following here. So, so we will just write a picture here. So, so let me write, let me write here M, and on this axis, this axis, let me write you know, R. So flow, flow domain is some, always something, something like, something like this, right? And so like towards the edges of M, it goes to, it can go to. Okay, so, so this is how flow domain basically looks like. So, so what I can do, I can fix, fix here any point on M zero to uh, T zero, and. Because this is flow domain, I can always connect this to the point M0, 0. There's some segment which lies entirely. This segment is just 0, M, M0 of S for S between 0 and T, T0. And this is always inside of the flow domain. Because, yeah, sorry, uh, yeah, inside of the flow domain because it's a flow domain, right? So this is always there. And what you can now basically do is that you can find some subdivision of this segment, and because this is compact, you can you can co cover it. You can find that. No, I will write that picture here, and you can okay, for example, like this. So you can cover this. By, by this this rectangle, where this U is a single domain for some ready chart, and this these guys are some intervals i zero, i one, i two, i three, such that they intersect they intersect uh, pairwise intersect. <clears throat> and the idea is now that you you can use a simple and you can always arrange this that there is this, this U is a single grid chart because you can you know, take intersections because there are five elements of them <clears throat> and then there are there are some V V zero to V K grid charts in. Great local charts in M, such that each of these little squares is mapped into B, J, or J going from 0 to K, right? So you can use this theorem here, and this theorem is uh, saying, it's not saying because I didn't tell you, uh, I'm going to go to unit, right? Very important. Unique solution to this problem. So you can you can now basically you can now basically you know compare restrictions of theta and theta prime here and here they have to be the same and because they have to be the same here you can now compare them on this bigger square and set set the initial conditions for this guy here to be to be something on the overlap. And by fixing these initial conditions, because we, which is the same for both, by, by induction step, you can then prove that they are same, same on two squares, and then you can inductively prove that they are the same on this whole pink uh, strip. And because, okay, so, so one can prove that theta is equal to I2. Where I prime is just the union of J goes from zero to K I J, and uh, because M zero T zero was an arbitrary point, and you have found some open subset of your because this is open subset of of D, so you have found for every point you have found open subset such that they coincide on this open subset. Because everything is a sheaf, uh, you can you can use this to to cover you can cover your G with those open subsets and 
prove that theta is equal to theta prime. So, so the idea is that you can connect this here and do everything on this on this little strip. And this initial condition, this initial condition just fixes for you the zero induction step, and then you kind of use those offset initial conditions to to prove that they actually have to be equal on the whole whole strip. So this is the main main trick. Which I will use like seven times altogether. So I call this strip trick. It's not a trick, it's just, you know, <laughs> but just to make some funny name. So I call this strip trick. So this is step, step four. And then what is step five? I already lost almost 20 minutes, nice. <laughs> Okay, there I am. Step five. So far, I, I, I don't have any, any such a flow, but I can construct construct theta from n times r g to n uh, satisfying star. Uh, on on some on some flow domain e. So how does one actually construct this map? Okay, so again, imagine n times. So this is n. This, this direction is r. And you for any m m zero, you can always find a little square. Uh, and again, I have to ask. I want to construct this theta such that the line that is theta zero. So, so for every m zero, you can find a little square such that it's mapped by theta zero inside of some gradual charts, and such that this 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 u this this one side of this rectangle is is some gradual chart for a manifold. So you can construct this, and since you can do this for every point, you can you can basically cover your you can cover your manifold by some squares inside of inside of n times r. A union of all these squares is a flow domain. So this it's easy to see that the section of any of those is an interval uh, every point. And uh, this is how you construct d. So this, so this is d, and then you have to prove that. Everything agrees on the overlaps, but you can do this basically using the strip trick, strip trick, strip trick again, uh, because you can call it either strip or slip. Uh, slip, slip is another you know, slip of paper. Is it not? Oh, strip of paper. Strip is better. Okay, so so you can use strip trick again to prove that it actually has. has the, def, the thetas have to be uh, agree on the overlaps because again you just choose some point and prove that it's uh, in the, using, using the same idea. You can do that. Right? All the time you have to connect it to the to, to, to kind of n times zero, so you can use the initial conditions. You assume uh, your map to satisfy, right? It's the same problem. Okay, so and we are once almost finished yeah. at this point. And actually, I think this one, all right, so is there a way to fix this small domain, right? So you assume yes. that D is given. So let's say you don't assume that D is given, but you can make it bigger or smaller. Mm -hmm. And somehow the solution that you consider, right, is a priori not unique. So the flow would be like a faster or slower, right? Do you understand this correctly? But I always fix this underlined map. Okay. So this is always fixed. Uh, and what I didn't tell you uh, that I wanted to prove again, you can. No, I don't really understand the question. To be honest. Uh, so somehow, if you take your d, mm -hmm. uh, let's say if you take another d, mm -hmm. because you have one d, and you consider something smaller, mm -hmm. some smaller stuff domain, mm -hmm. right? Then somehow you will help. Yes, what I can do, what I can do, 
I, I don't believe I maybe know what you are asking. So so here I fix really fix a flow domain and then prove that every theta uh, which satisfies this uh, this differential equation together with these initial conditions is already uniquely determined. Yes. Of course, I can take two ready domains, and it was actually corollary of this lemma here. So of course, you can take. If theta is defined on on F, some sum n times r d and theta prime is defined on on some flow domain d prime, uh, then then because d intersecting d, d prime is again a flow domain. So, so they, they, are, they are the same on the overlap. So, so it's a flow domain. And then you can simply use this lemma to prove that theta restricted to the e prime is the same as theta prime. Right. So, if you take two flow domains, they, they have to agree on the intersection of those two flow domains. And this is actually important in here, in part six. So you define D max to be union of all flow domains uh, with some theta. So, so saying that you 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 take a union of all flow domains where you have found some theta satisfying satisfying the system. You already know that this is not this is a non-empty set because of phi, right? And uh, union of flow domains is again a flow domain. It's easy to see, and then you can define a theta. Uh, by doing all those thetas, right? Because this is a union of all flow domains where we have theta. So you can, and th this is, of course, an open cover of this, of this open set. And then you can declare theta on, the, on this whole open subset uh, to be uh, one of those thetas on, on this for, uh, open sets which form the union of, of this Dmax. And because of this lemma, this corollary here, uh, kind of this, these local sections of your sheet agree on the overlaps. Therefore, uh, uh, theta is globally well defined map from, from this open sub manifold of n times r. Right? And uh, it, one can easily check that it satisfies this system star because, you know, this, one can restrict the differential equation uh, and compare it locally. Therefore, and then from it conclude that it holds globally because everything, um, all functions live in sections of a sheet, uh, in, in um, our sections of the sheet. So, so you can do this. And then there is a last step, and this last step is actually to prove that these d max is the whole n times r. Or if, if m is not compact, compact, you can show that uh, what the d max is. d max is a flow, flow domain, domain of, of theta 0. Uh, because we have assumed for simplicity that uh, your manifold is compact, therefore this theta zero is globally defined. But if not, then one can use the same argument here to prove that um, uh, this Dmax is actually the whole domain of theta zero. And again, one employs slip trick to do this. So, so if you have Dmax to be just some non-trivial subset. Several subset of of uh, n times r, then 
there's certainly some point which is which is outside but basically what you can then do you can you can construct a little strip going to going to the point n0 for, for this is some n, n0 t0 and then you can use the strip, strip trick to actually construct the solution on this entire strip so you can iteratively construct it using this this, this part free uh, there is very important detail hidden here so okay you can ask why cannot you do, do this yourself uh, for uh, for ordinary manifolds so how, how how you can how is it that you cannot ex uh, can expand the flow domain to, to arbitrary to two whole and times r and the, the point is that you already have this theta zero and theta zero uh, already fixes you this partition of this of this of this interval uh, and then you know that you can solve your differential equations on the on on, on the whole squares because you are not limited by some you know incompleteness in ordinary case of course you cannot do this because you don't know in advance that you can solve your differential equation on the whole square here you know because the or the, the underlying manifold, underlying map is already fixed and yeah okay so, so and that's it basically how we construct how we construct this this, this flow for degree zero vector fields okay so finally i get to non-zero degree vector fields <clears throat> but this is completely trivial compared to this degree zero case so this degree zero case was the most complicated one which kind of evaded me for two years this non-zero degree one is it's actually quite easy. So, non zero degree flows. Okay, so this time I assume that my vector field has some non zero degree. And the idea is to replace. Just replace R with R shifted by minus K. Uh, this is kind of just, just a notation. Uh, don't worry too much about it. So this means that this is a graded manifold. This is a graded manifold. And the underlying ordinary manifold is just a point. So the underlying manifold is trivial uh, with single radius, single global coordinate psi of degree minus k. So this shift really means that your variables you had on R uh, are shift are shifted degrees so that they, they have this degree so so i am on r you have degree zero one degrees of coordinate and if you shift the degrees you end up with single coordinate of degree minus k and this ensures that the degree of coordinate vector field on this on this manifold has degree k right because uh, this, this vector field kills size in your, in your functions so if you kill psi your degree raises by k because you have one minus k coordinate less <laughs> so this is coordinate k and this is degree k and in fact there is a there is a smooth map from r minus k to r minus uh, sorry times r minus k to r minus k making this r shifted by minus k together with this equation plus and the unit which is again you know this maybe, maybe just zero there, there is unit uh, into integrated free group uh, 
so, so there is a texture of great Lee group on this on this shifted on this shifted vector space. Uh, it's kind of very very trivial. So the pullback by this map psi, uh, plus takes psi and makes it into psi one plus psi two here. Right? So so that's it. And this map zero is just a map which goes from R minus K to to uh, to a trivial to trivial manifold which puts everything to zero. Basically, and that's it. And this means that that we can we can make the following definition. So so, so the idea. So definition. So suppose x is a vector field on a graded manifold of the degree k equal zero. Uh, well, uh, not equal. Not equal to zero. Then theta, which is met from n times r minus k to n, uh, is a maximum is a maximum flow. This maximum is kind of stupid here, but maximum means that you choose the maximum, but there are no other flow domains here, so so there is only single domain for a flow possible. Uh, of x, x if and now you 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 use the same diagrams as before uh, in the same diagrams where R is replaced by R shifted by minus k. And t is replaced by psi so so I won't repeat all of the diagrams. there were these diagrams which represented the fact that theta is an action, so still theta will be a right action of, of this abelian vertically group on on m, and still there is this condition that uh, this one over delta psi is theta related to x, which which is equivalent to saying that again one over one times delta c acting on theta star is theta star composed with x. So, so this is the st still the same condition. Now it makes sense because this has degree k, this is degree k, so this raises degree by k. This is degree zero. This is degree zero. This is raises degree by k. So this kind of this condition makes sense. And there are some there are some initial remarks. So so the underlying map is rather stupid of this theta because this is a this is a map over a single point. So this underlying map theta. Underline goes from n times one point set to m, and this zero section map, which is this this, this section one m, which I do not like this. So the underlying map of this guy simply maps m to m star, and because those two guys have to compose to identity. We have no other choice that the theta underlying maps n star to n. So it's just a projection. The underlying map of theta is always just a projection in this case. So on the kind of on the topological side of things, uh, it's really a trivial thing. So there's nothing. Uh, also, kind of for this condition to make sense, this also means that the flow domain has to be the whole n times star. So so really. But it's kind of obvious that it is definitely contain M. The only subset containing the whole M is this one. Uh, okay, so this is first observation, which is somewhat not unpleasant. But the other one is rather unpleasant. And at least it is for 
If we want to flow with this, then observe that those coordinate vector fields they do commute always. Uh, graded commute. A graded commutator of those coordinate vector fields on R minus K and R zero. Therefore, also these guys commute. And And this is very important thing because if these guys commute and they are theta related, then also these guys uh, not not commute, but it it then proves that zero has to be theta related to the great commutator of x with itself, uh, which is the same thing as saying that theta star of composed with xx has to be zero. And then you can act on this by uh, this zero section here. And if you pull this equation by zero section, it gives you that necessarily xx is zero, right? So if there exists a flow, necessarily x has to graded commute with itself. So when k is even, this is tautological, tautologically satisfies, so there's no, no, no problem. But if k is odd, this tells you that the flow can only exist for for uh, vector fields which satisfy this condition. Okay? So that's, that's an unpleasant observation, but I decided to stick with this definition and just, you know, acknowledge the fact. Okay, so. so is it ever possible that uh, uh, the bracket of x with x is proportional to itself? Uh, <coughs> Maybe the grading. Probably. Grading? Uh, grading for, yeah, yeah, for this, grading for this. Unless you have a coefficient of competency. Well, so, uh, yeah, by some I'm thinking of like uh, proportional to the activity position. Not by the Okay, so so what to do next? Okay, so this condition, okay, so this means that so if k k is odd. Uh, then flow, flow can exist and this is only for only for homological so-called homological x that is x x is zero or sometimes this, this is just because this is just uh, two times x squared so it's really means that x is to square to zero Okay, so but whatever. Uh, as I told you last time, in super super geometry, this is kind of mitigated by uh, because their flow domain is somewhat different. They don't use just single like odd part of R or even part R zero one or R one zero. They use R one one, which contains both even a parameter and a parameter and they somewhat don't use the coordinate vector field but they use some combination thereof and then the, 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 another problem is that uh, there is no I write about that, that there is no supergroup structure on this R11 which will then make this into right action so, so it's something for something uh, okay so where are my notes? Ah, here. Okay, so how does one prove that such such flow flows exist? And it's very easy. So so first observation is yes, no, very short lemma, which is not very difficult to prove. So if you have if you have a function on this global function on this product gradient manifold <coughs> and 
this function determines and this uniquely determines by the sequence uh, labeled by non-negative integer uh, where fr is a function only on n, global function on n and degree of this function is degree of f plus r times k and and they are given those functions are given by so you simply It's kind of obvious after I finish my formula. R F. So you basically, yeah, basically because loc at least locally, globally is not true, but globally every function here, uh, every function here can be imagined as some formal power series in size. Where each term, uh, each term has coefficients in functions on the gradient manifold m, right? And this fr is simply the coefficient function. So if, if you differentiate xi out of your uh, out of your functions r times, and then basically evaluate it at zero, so meaning you pull it back using this map, this give you this gives you this function, and that's it. Uh, it is not true globally that every function here can be indeed written as this formal power series in XI because uh, there are no formal power series globally, they are only locally. Uh, you can do it, but you can do you can actually prove this locally. So you really choose some coordinates, write this locally, look at the local representative of this, and then apply the coordinate vector fields on the local expression. And then realize, okay, I got some functions which can be then glued together to get some global functions on, on M. So, so that's kind of not very difficult to prove. Uh, of course, if if k is even, uh, if k is odd, sorry, not only f r is only non-zero, only for r equal to zero or one because they are not if xi is an odd parameter of course there is no xi to power three two yeah okay and the proof is proof is straightforward and I will tell you it's not difficult and <laughs> And then there is simple theorem which tells you that if x is a vector field of degree k equal to no, not equal to zero, then its maximum flow flow exists is unique. And uh, sorry, and for I have to assume that x x is zero for for k of otherwise can you do that? And how 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 does one prove this? This is actually almost trivial because. You want to determine theta star of every any function on, on n. And because 
you end up here. So this is a function here. You can calculate this R component or this coefficient in state of expansion size. And this basically tells you that this function has to be equal to 1 over R star x acting R times on L. <laughs> and that's it. That's how you prove it. So you simply plug into the equation. This is what you get after two lines. So this not very, very complicated. Uh, observe that this is another argument why x has to be homological for for odd r for, for odd k because you know in order for this to define a function uh, if k is odd then this has to be automatically zero for r greater than one but this forces you x to x squared to be zero or the other part is also so otherwise this is not solvable you cannot solve this and that's it Uh, and then, of course, uh, I, yeah, I forgot to tell you something in, this, in the proof before. Here, it should be like a point eight. <laughs> uh, it's telling that theta automatically satisfies. Satisfies. Satisfies uh, this group like. Group like or um, no action 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 property. I don't know how to call it, but I I, I wanted my flow to be a right action of, of this group, and I didn't prove it here. I only constructed theta, but it actually already follows from some uniqueness claims, so you don't have to you are. In the construction of theta, you never directly impose those conditions. You just construct it and then verify, OK, it satisfies it. And it's the same here. Here, we can always also quite easily verify that this already satisfies uh, those uh, conditions automatically. OK, so, so my last, last two comments, uh, only comments, so this is basically so basically it. And I have some final final comments. So I said the other thing is working for progress. So I've got five minutes, so it should be okay. Ten minutes. Ten minutes like I thought it's late. Okay, so so for for odd vector fields, also that is called example. But if k is odd, then this flow actually is super easy to write them explicitly. So then theta ask theta ask f uh, pullback of f is what is really just you pullback using projection f from the base manifold and then you pull back vector field x acting on, on f and then you multiply it by psi and this is your flow so, so it's not very interesting and complicated expression right so this is the flow explicitly for for odd psi. For if k is even, uh, then locally, locally, this is not true globally because again, infinite sums do not really make sense. But if you if you do this locally, this is really something like you take pull back. X R and multiply this by psi to power R. So this is uh, more or less speaking, this is indeed just, just an exponential, right? This is 
exponent in psi x, morally speaking. So, so you, you really pull back by acting by exponential in this psi x on f, and that's it. Of course, this is not globally true. Um, this will be true. Uh, no, this is not true. Uh, globally, but lo locally, this, this expression makes sense. Globally, not. Okay, and okay, so you ask me, you don't yet, but you will. Uh, so, so are, are those flows anyhow uh, useful? It's nice. I don't know. I find it nice, a uh, generalization uh, to have flows. So, so can, for example, one relate flows to lead derivative? Right? So, the lead derivative standardly is, is, uh, <coughs> is written in terms of proofs. So, I can give you the formula. Which will look strange, but it, it is precisely what the derivative is. So, so you can write commutator of two vector fields, which is which is the derivative. Yeah. With, with respect to x acting on y, you can write this as follows. So it will be a really strangely looking operator. Which looks quite artificial, and it is, but it's what it is. Sorry. I and the one composed with theta star. So this is the derivative. So this looks very strange. So you pull back to, to the product, act by this i times one vector field pull back to double product. There is some map which I will explain in a moment, which pulls it back to the product, and you act by this vector field, and then you pull it back to M using the zero section, and I claim that this is the derivative. Uh, what is this delta zero map? So I won't tell you how it's defined on graded manifolds, but its underlying map simply maps MT to M uh, T minus t. So this is kind of anti-diagonal embedding of uh, r into r times r and its identity on m. So this is this is what this double <laughs> minus is, a delta minus is. And so why this why this makes sense? So it looks really strange, but if you would if you would do this uh, on ordinary manifold and you work out what this actually means, it's precisely this formula, right? That the derivative of two vectors acting on F can be calculated like you pull you pull your function using the flow of x by minus t, then x by y, and then you you pull it back, and then you calculate you differentiate it as this t equals zero. So this is standard formula for the derivative. If you write it in terms of functions, so if you write what the derivative does on functions, then this is precisely the formula for it. And this is this is precisely this, except you don't know how to differentiate. So so basically you have to pull pull everything standard where you have a parameter t as a variable, then you act by this vector field, which is precisely the analog of differentiating with respect to t. And this pulling back by zero section is evaluating this at t equals zero. So, so this is just just, just this formula, nothing else. Can you do something similar for different vectors? Um, no, no, yet, not yet. The problem is that, yeah, not yet, because I don't even know how to kind of. This is the problem because here we operate with maps between manifolds and. I know I, I somehow, somehow do not know how to rephrase action of of this map theta on on forms, which are which are basically defined using uh, directly from the sheet of vector fields, like you, you define dual space and blah blah. So I don't know yet how to work with forms in this setting. No idea. 
Okay, so, and so this is for degree zero x because there's t, but it also works if you if x is non zero degree, then you, you simply replace your here delta t with delta xi identity on r replace with identity on r minus k. Uh, okay, and what I'm currently working on is that one can show, for example, there is a notion of because this theta is an action of the group. So you can define notion of vector fields which are invariant and with respect to this action. Uh, and then you can prove, and I, I think I already have a proof, but it's not, not in a you know, confirmed phase. But for example, one can show that uh, vector field y is invariant under the flow uh, if and only if it commutes x and y commute and then of course there is a notion of commuting actions on you can have two actions on, on of two different groups and somewhat same it means that they commute and of course the claim is that the actions should commute if and only if the vector fields commute and the final idea behind this is to use flows to to prove Frobenius theorem uh, because this is how Frobenius theorem is proved classically it's somewhat uh, Take your generators of your. Uh, you take generators of your. Uh, distribution. I should know this now. <laughs> of your distribution. Then you somewhat prove that you can manipulate them in a way that they commute uh, among themselves, and then you can you you must touch flows, and basically the parameter of, of your n flows become coordinates on your in a integral sub manifold. So this is how it goes. Set. This integral sum manifold. So this is why I wanted flows to have, right, in the first place, to, to have some some of the Frobenius theorem. And that's it. Okay. Very so good. so thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's a nice uh, type of talk. So thank you for it. And uh, here's the time for questions. Kind of question. Yeah, you know very well that there is this relation between uh, rated geometry and proper diverse, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, do you know what's flow of this homological mm -hmm. vector field in terms of proper diverse? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know whether it's something interesting because I, I I still don't really know how to utilize this of flows because, for example, uh, flows for degree zero vector fields, they you can set you can set this variable t to some constant, and then you get your diffeomorphism of a gradient manifold, but not, not for grid flow, because you cannot really fix this second input to get some map from n to n. So this is not really a collection of any, it's not a collection of diffeomorphisms as ordinary flows. So I don't know how to use it. And here you can see that for for odd vector fields, this flow looks somewhat trivial, so I don't know how to interpret it or use it. Somehow, what, what does it mean for uh, for quantum algebras? No idea. Or even the simple simple cases like Poisson manifolds and this shifted tangent bundle is, is then very manifold in a Poisson structure. But I know. So uh, again, about this uh, uh, squares to zero condition. So here it follows from this model that you set up, right? Mm -hmm. M times RK. Yes. Um, so uh, is, is it possible to change the model or something? Yes, I, I, I was thinking about that. So, to have this, uh, so the idea is in, yeah, in the su super geometry. Yeah. So in the four super manifolds, you really can take, like, you can take. What, what they do actually <coughs> is that you can take this supermanifold R11, where you have you have two parameters t and xi. One is this is even parameter, this is of parameter. So you can construct uh, you can construct odd vector field, which is not just d psi, but it's also some function, some function k of t times psi d over. Mm -hmm. So this is this is this is also odd vector field, mm -hmm. and they somewhat use this this odd vector field 
as this instead of my one over weak side, they use one time one uh, they use uh, this thing. Mm -hmm. Then prove that even for you can you can basically fiddle with this function k uh, such that you, you can choose this such that you can solve this for any you can solve this for any odd vector field, mm -hmm. not not only homological one. No, for, for any. Uh, no, no, no. Ah. But I think that you, that you don't have to choose. You don't have to choose this k. Solve for this k. So ah. you can find it. Okay. Uh, so this is this is what I understand from 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 the super super manifold papers. That's, that's, uh, but the other problem is that you this is not uh, this is you cannot find a least supergroup then on on this on this space. Making ah. your flow to be uh, action of this of this supergroup. In general, in general, of course, yeah. So of course, I had I, I I want to try similar approach. So, but the problem is with gradient manifold is much more rigid somewhat because you want to have some variable psi of degree minus k. So you want to somehow combine this with with something of degree. Minus k. So, for example, if you would like to have dt here, so it still adds also some variable t of degree zero. Mm -hmm. Then, so the idea can be very similar, but then you cannot put it xi here because if you put xi here, it will have degree minus k. So you also have to have some kind of conjugated variable of degree k yeah. and use it instead. And maybe then it's it's also doable. I I don't know. Uh, I can try. This is I, I want to just try it for part for some examples whether it's it's possible or not. But so the uh, the idea that I had was not to try to do it for an arbitrary vector field, but one that satisfies a slightly more general condition of uh, intuitivity. So you take the vector and it can be proportional to itself with a graded coefficient, right? Something so. So again, you, you can choose the uh, uh, if you use an extra variable that will play the role of this compensating coefficient, and it seems like it could, you know, uh, generalize nicely uh, compared to just uh, uh, square zero. Yes, but just then, the end, just, just the yeah, end. but it will, it will still not kind of, it will still not work because of this, right? So you would have to also change, uh, change something else, not just the condition. Of no, but uh, I mean that follows from. From, from the commutation of C, right? Mm -hmm. But if you find a model that ah, has then, other property. Yeah, okay. So I can, for example, choose this in a way that yeah. this do not commute. Yeah, or I mean, it could be like with two you know, graded parameters, not necessarily. Yeah, that's maybe, that's maybe possible. Yeah. Yeah. But for for me, fortunately, I have, I, I have this application for Frobenius theorem in mind. Yeah. And in Frobenius theorem, you start by choosing family of Commuting vector yeah. fields, meaning that they also and they commute because they are in fact coordinate vector fields. So basically, the idea is that you can take your distribution at any point and manipulate, uh, cho choose local coordinates such that your generators of distributions are in fact coordinate vector fields. Mm -hmm. And coordinate vector fields, even for odd variables, are homologically square to, to mm -hmm. zero. So for Frobenius, this should not be a problem, yeah. right? Yeah. But in general, who knows? I maybe have a comment about mm -hmm. the super case because I think the difference is not only that you can choose parameter living in one one dimensional space, but um, the space of morphisms. Because let's start, for example, from real, uh, from real case, then your category of super manifolds, your objects are. Spectral models, batch fields here. Mm -hmm. And uh, as I remember, you were saying it was the same for our graded guys, you have a model. Then, what you're, what you're doing, you're extending uh, morphisms in this category. Uh, I mean, you, can, you can change it to not, not only not, you, you, you don't have to have only degree zero ones, but also but you, you can, can shift. You can mix now, guys. Yeah. And it's only first step because to define a super manifold, your construction should be functorial, uh, so you can multi you, you can write morphisms uh, with coefficients in a, are arbitrary uh, supercommutative mm -hmm. super algebra. 
Mm -hmm. So it gives you a lot of uh, space of parameters. So the super manifold defined uh, with respect to this functor of points is something that is functorial with respect to uh, tensoring mm -hmm. morphism by this community of algebra. And that's why you, you got well, a more richer structure on the one, one dimensional space. That's why you can write uh, flows uh, for all vector fields, and it works. Um, and you can see that, for example, when you try to work with uh, integral system, for example, some generalization of KTV equation, mm -hmm. super KTVs. Uh, you can write it in, com in components, and usually your fields uh, should take value in some, again, it should be functorial with respect to choice of super community of algebra, because I've seen a lot of strange papers when they assume that. Okay, let's in this super KDV, uh, we will take values in some Grassmann algebra is a certain Grassmann algebra. Then everything becomes very simple. You have a some nonlinear equation and a lot of linear guys. So something similar happens here, but then you don't reconstruct the whole uh, the whole process. So I'm wondering, could you now maybe change your definition of a graded manifold to include so you, you can write morphisms that is functorial with respect to multiplication no, I by, yeah. by probably, some, probably yes, yes. Computers have that rated algebra and then it should, it should because you kind of compared to super you don't make one extra step to enrich your morphism space. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, maybe it's possible to kind of yeah. I, I'm not saying that it's not possible, yeah, of course. But it also depends on what you kind of need. Yeah. So, so I wanted to keep things as close to the ordinary geometry as possible. Ordinary geometry as possible. So, so I just want to work with in many things life. But, but maybe it's just uh, key to get something more interesting. Yeah, yeah, you know, this is this is yeah because in this case, this objective fields. The flows are kind of stupid and it's not very really interesting. Uh, I don't know. So. As I mentioned, for the super semantic integral equations, some PDEs, you really need this material mm -hmm. to get something new, and you really see that you will lose some old structures if you will not okay, you do it in Okay, thanks. Um, one uh, question from, from online audience, maybe. Um, I got the impression that uh, somebody is uh, raising uh, their hand, but I don't know whether so maybe, it's maybe still... So maybe he was raising hand like, stop, please. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how, how to interpret. <laughs> um, I want to go... Oh, no, no. Um, let's wait for, for a second. If uh, there is some technical program, problem... Okay. Um, By the way, the question is written in the chat if you want to read it. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm trying. Is there a way to generate graded vector fields and flows in this setting as Hamiltonian fields? Is there a good notion of simple structure on, on z graded manifolds? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Of course, sure. You can take. Uh, there is a notion of simple uh, structures on graded manifolds, and of course, you can construct Hamilton vector fields and then ask about their flows. Sure, sure, why not? I don't know what's the interpretation of, of, of the flows in this case. I don't know what it is. It's certainly not, not a motion. You know, mm -hmm. but for degree zero, maybe you can maybe uh, interpret it as a, as a mechanical, but in general case, I don't know. But certainly, you can do simple geometry in, in grade setting. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not an issue. It's sufficient uh, for uh, for you, maybe. Uh, Anonymous okay. guest ask your question. Okay. Um, Okay, so uh, there's. 
There is double theorem for gradient manifolds. Sure. So, so, but this it, it's this it's completely the same as in the uh, in the classical setting. So there are some coordinates. Uh, it depends on the degree of your symplectic form, of course, uh, because this differs very greatly depending on whether it is odd or even somehow. But there certainly there there is a certain there is certainly is a version of Darby theorem which says around every point there is local chart where great local chart where symplectic forms really is just Dean Cyrus some standard form adapted to the fact that it does not have uh, uh, it can have zero uh, it can have no zero degrees so then you have to kind of pair them differently mm -hmm. uh, to get the correct degree but there are some kind of coordinates for, for symplectic manifolds. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's proved for general Z grade manifolds or only for this non-negatively graded ones. This I'm not sure about. Uh, but effectively for non-negatively graded there is double theorem proved for for symplectic structures. Okay. So, no other question? Seems to be the case. So, thank Elian again for thank you. Answers. Thank you for coming. <laughs>